Now I've got the kitchen scraps to take down to from last night's dinner. Take down on the chickens, live in our straw bale house. Check this out, this is the, the bay we visit them um, twice a day. So if they're down in your bottom paddock, it's a long trip to go. So chickens, they all get locked away every night. So they don't get turned into a fox's dinner. G'day friend, hey how are you going? You want first pick, do you? Morning, everyone. Okay, we've got a few piggies. Where's the piggies? Piggies are starting to take up residence outside, which is a little bit worrying. We're going to have to get into them. You don't get them inside, but here we go. There's some of last night's kitchen scraps. I'm going to go back and get... The scratch mix to fill the scratch mix bins up. You be nice everyone, let everyone have a turn. Scratch mix on the shoulder, taking it over to our feed bins. This is our um, chicken, the Taj Mahal. This is our chicken rooster, chicken house. Guess so. I'm going to put this down. Man, just trying to show you how to open these, these feed bags. Um, a lot of people got chickens now. And um, so a lot of people are using scratch mix to feed their chickens. Most of them come in a poly type bag, which is a pain in the butt, plastic. But um, opening these bags, if you don't know how to open them, it's a pain in the butt. Um, on this bag, you see on one side, you have like just this the single loop essentially on the other side you've you have it where it's all knotted where all the knots are so all the knots are on one side on this bag they're on the front of it and the single loop is on the back so what you want to do is the side that's got the the side that's got the loops on it so on this bag it's the front I'll say I'll I've already opened this because I thought the camera was filming, but it wasn't. But anyhow, so you want to cut the first couple loops on this side, put the scissors underneath the loop and cut it. Cut it like such and pull the string front and back. You'll find the string comes loose on two ends on the front. So just pull it. Whoop. Very good. Come on down. Whoop. You become pain. But yeah, so just pull the, the string on the front and you'll get that first string and the second string. Just pull them both and the whole thing will come undone. Just like magic. <laughs> Don't leave that throw that on the ground in your chicken coop. Because that can get tangled around the chicken's legs. Essentially, you end up chopping their leg off, do a lot of damage in a day. So don't leave that around, lying on the ground. It's essentially, a bucket with a couple 90 degree elbows in it. 90 degree stormwater plumbing elbows in it. Look out, friend. A little cap. This is like a little rain cap. Put him over the top of the elbow, just to keep the water. Elbows, they're about, oh, about 30 mil, three centimeters off the bottom of the bucket because they love the, um, the sunflowers. Sunflowers or our chickens' favorites, they get in there and they'll just kick the seeds out till they get the sunflower. And see these pesky chickens come along? We've got Rudy and Friend here. Friend's our favorite. Um, you shouldn't have favorites, I know, with your kids. But um, you can see them, they're in there picking the sunflower seeds out. So that if that was just, a tray they had easy access to they could just flick all the other seeds out till they got the sunflowers and you had all that wasted seed on the ground where these see he's just wasted a heap there so that's what it when they when they put their heads in through the the bottom elbow 
they can't waste much feed. It's a great feeder and the bonus is if you hang it up somewhere we hang them up we hang them up off the ground and it's very hard for rodents to get in amongst it yeah. our ducks here this duck bath this is essentially filled from a tank our gravity fed tank up the top there not sure if it shows up in the background but our gravity fed tank which comes from our bore solar powered bore which is down the bottom of the property so solar powered bore obviously powered by the sun pumps water up to the header tank turn this tap on down here fills our duck bath up and the ducks get in amongst this water and do what ducks do they um they get amongst it they poop stir it up so it's a good syrupy liquid fertilizer We've got a, a um, bit of a dodgy cord here. So that pulls a plug. We've got a plug on the end of that cord. Pull the plug. And that plug is attached to this bit of poly pipe here we've got on the ground there. We can direct that onto our fruit trees. So this bit of water not only is um, water for our ducks to swim in, keep clean, etc. And ducks need water. So that's water for our ducks. They poop in that, stir it up, turn them nice liquid syrupy fertilizer. We pull the plug, that fertilizes the trees and also irrigates the trees. So that's awesome. And that's all powered by sun, solar powered, gravity fed. Awesome gravity is. Alrighty, I've got to do some other jobs. On the way out, just got to check the eggs. Only got one egg in there this morning. You lot, better start doing, no, you're doing a bit better job. What do you reckon, friend? Hey, is that yours? I think you're laying, weren't one of the few that are laying at the moment. Okay, might be for Gemma's lunch, this one. Alrighty, who's waiting to get let out? Look out. Get red. Okay. Be free. Piggies are on their way too. <laughs> this one of one of the best parts of the day this is. Go on, get out. We've got our um, boar here, our solar powered boar, which, um, yeah, she's been out of action for the last couple of months. So, um, we've got Steve, boar man, coming in today to hopefully he's coming, um, to come check it out, see what the see what the go is. We may have to pull the pump out from um, down the ground, but anyhow, our the hole for our boar it is um, about 33 meters deep. The hole is the where the pump is it's down about 24 meters so they call it the drawdown level so um we're gonna check it out steve will do a few tests on the electrics i suppose see if it's anything um up with our controller box and um then take it from there we'll possibly have to pull the pull the bore out uh pull the pump out um so yeah he's gonna come soon oh, it's about 9 30 now but yeah he's going to come soon not too soon because we don't have any sun on the panels at the moment but uh, the sun's probably about 20 minutes away just almost poking over the horizon there yeah we've got a few spectators down here yeah so i might um i might just get whip the whipper snipper out and just give this a little tidy up before he comes along Okay, good morning. Can't talk for very long. Big day. Got four batches of scrub cleanser going on today. So scrub cleanser is one of our best sellers. But because we make everything from scratch and it's very labour intensive, we do it all by hand in pots and uh, at the fresh herbs. So this is all about making like it's it's so sustainable because. Each batch that I make, 
I can really get in there and make sure it's perfect. Yep, bespoke skincare. Yeah, bespoke skincare. And I'm pretty excited that they're going into uh, this amazing lid, the bamboo lid. No plastic insert lid in there. That's a little bit of a paper. Um, yeah. Like Trying to reduce that. plastic as much as we can. We are. While I wait for Steve the bore man to turn up, I uh, and a little bit on the kitchen here. Um, these three drawer fronts on, which are over here. Though, we've got to allow gaps in between, obviously, gaps in between each drawer front. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to measure from the bottom to the top, see how that corresponds with the bottom to top measurement on the door, and um, see what sort of gaps they've allowed me. So, come check it out. I'm going to start at the bottom one. Should be safe to start at the bottom and work up. Tack a few screws into it. Make sure, first of all, if you're doing something like this, <coughs> you want to make sure your screws aren't going to punch through. When you screw them in, they're not going to punch through the door the door front. So the screws I've got are 30 millimeter long screws. About that far through. So a little flavor like that, that'll tell me when to stop. One millimeter packers. So see what I'm talking about here? This flag, I can stop it. That tells me when to stop. Because we've got too far, look what happens. It comes through the front, makes a big mess. So, I'm close into the corner. Stop. Same again. And I'm just using, just pushing the drill up into the corner uh, rather than having to measure every single one because you won't see inside the drawers. So, and it's, you can actually get it fairly quite accurate. And also, not a good hand to put your, not a good idea to put your hand in front of the drill. So, put it out of the way. Don't put it right in front because if it do go through, the hand's going to cop it. Again, your screws. Look at these. If I use a screw that long, it's a bit of an overkill. But look, that's going to punch through the front of the drawer front. These ones, I've got um, two millimeters to spare. So I want to draw. I don't want to drive them deep into the the uh, chipboard. Essentially just feathering the trigger. And you just flush, essentially flush with it. the front.
So this is um, take two on putting the, the last drawer on. As I say, it's hard to it's hard to get this clamped in position because you can't close the drawer and see how it um, how it fits. So what I'm going to do, what I am going to do, I didn't realise I had some double sided sticky tape. It's Australia's most powerful double sided sticky tape apparently, and I'm going to try sticking it on. Whoop. Positioning it. Should we do that? Should we? I hope not. I'm going to try positioning it with the uh, double sided sticky tape. And I think that should just, hopefully, it gets it. It's just, I might have to reposition that bit. Is it going to come off? So, I'm going to try. The double sided sticky tape. The last draw. So, get it where I think it's going to be in a pretty good position. And then, squish it up onto it. Put the clamp on it just to hold it. And just to uh, yeah, hold it for the moment. Need a bit more adjusting on it. So, and the perfect thing about them is I'm going to put the same ones on and change the um, satin chrome ones to these ones. Check this out manufacturing day today. Real humans making real skincare. We reckon we're the most sustainable skincare business in Australia. Every product that we have on our website is made here on site in a lab with standalone solar power we're generating and storing our own not buying it we use herbs grown down in the garden in our skincare we're making our own carbon credits not buying them and look at this we got what do we got oh this is for our um our scrub yeah case making scrub today so scrub day today, fresh batch happening. If you want your scrub, it'll be a fresh batch made today, Wednesday the 12th of uh, July. Check it out. I'll try and get rid of the reflection. I'm outside. I can't, I'm not allowed inside on manufacturing day. Check this out. We've got an infusion. This is part of our um, scrub our um, scrub cleanser is sustainably grown harvested using regenerative farming techniques oh, down there in our skincare herb garden how's this just entering our showroom check this out i know it's a work in progress still a bit messy a fair bit messy but, uh, look at this this is passive solar design look at this middle of winter look how far the sun's coming in here almost the whole way this awesome bit of gear up in the sky the sun it's the best heater you could ever wish for so that comes in the sun comes in heats the floor up the slab absorbs all that heat and energy during the day at night it releases that so it keeps it nice and warm in here we're double glazed in summer 
the sun won't be coming in here at all because the sun, the sun essentially gets higher in the sky and we have an awning out here to keep the sun out. So it'll be nice and cool here in, um, in summer. Solar passive design, keep it in mind if you build. Save you a lot of money and make your home comfortable. So um, not too much joy just yet with, the, um, with our solar bore, um, our pump. It appears the, um, the panel might be the issue. Yeah, there's a couple of cracks in the panel, so not sure because uh, we, we had the, the fire, the bushfires come oh, right up to the fence here. Essentially they come in, they come in, yeah, right up to the fence line here. So it got very hot here in, uh, yeah, in 2020, which the bore hasn't operated since then. So maybe it's something to do with the heat in the, um, from the bushfires in, um, in 2020 we had here. It hasn't operated since then. We've had, um, we had plenty of rain um, since 2020, uh, but we're looking at coming into a, um, El Nino, so El Nino, dry one. So we want this operating in time for um, when uh, Nino comes along. Definitely.